I have a great admiration for massive and powerful high-end amplifiers, especially when their size is not just for show. The Tonewinner 82 Pro Plus fits this description perfectly. Although it is a costly amplifier, it is not exorbitant, coming at around $2700 Greatly depending on where you find it, it promises a lot, but does it deliver? It makes a statement with its build quality. It's got a solid, hefty feel, thanks to the classic black and silver aluminum alloy chassis. The black finish feels smooth and looks great. It should easily complement most audio setups. Tonewinner prioritized durability here, and you can feel it. It weighs almost 40 kilograms, or close to 80 pounds. I can stand on it comfortably without any harm, but please don't try it. On both sides of the amplifier, there are large heatsinks that serve a purpose beyond just looking impressive. The large surface area of these heatsinks is designed to efficiently handle high power output without overheating. This is particularly beneficial for ones who enjoy extended listening sessions, as the device is less likely to shut down or become damaged due to overheating. Trust me, this is important because the amplifier generates a significant amount of heat over time. A remarkable design feature of this amp is its easy-to-read LED screen located on the front panel. The screen is capable of clearly displaying the current input of the amplifier, its volume, the mode in which it's working, and the type of files it's playing back, which is a pleasant addition. The AD2 Pro Plus is an integrated amplifier that offers a variety of input-output options. Let's start with the digital inputs, which go through the internal DAC. There is one USB Type-B port to connect computers and some music streamers, along with two optical Toslink connections and a single coax RCA port. Then, we've got some analog options that bypass the internal DAC, staying analog throughout the entire remainder of the audio chain. We can connect the phono output of an MM or MC turntable, but most of you will probably use regular single-ended RCAs or balanced XLRs for the left and right channels. The power connector is separated by some space from everything else on the back to accommodate even the thickest audio-grade power cables. A useful addition is a ground connection, which can be connected to some kind of a grounding unit to reduce noise or solve ground loop issues. The speaker terminals are large and robust, and there are two sets of them. This allows you to connect two pairs of speakers, which can be useful for A-B testing. You can use a remote to switch between the outputs, or you can simply choose to bi-wire your speakers, setting the amplifier to use two sets of outputs at once. If you want to use a subwoofer, you can connect it to this amplifier using dedicated sub-outs, either RCA or XLR. It's my favorite way of integrating a subwoofer into a stereo system. The device has a signal-to-noise ratio of over 100 decibels, which indicates a decent level of clarity in the sound. The frequency response range is wider than the standard 20 to 20K, with a range of 15 Hz to 95 kHz. It has a maximum power output of 240 watts when one channel is driven at 8 ohms. Despite being rated at 8 ohms, it can easily handle speakers that are deep below 4 ohms. The total harmonic distortion of the unit is below 0.05% at 1 kHz, which is not extremely low, but it applies to the entire unit, including the DAC and the amp sections. The USB input support the DSD512, and PCM 32-bit up to 768 kHz. That's quite impressive. The optical and coaxial inputs go up to 192 kHz due to their nature and their limitations. Tonality-wise, both Class A and Class AB modes have a neutral sound, without any added bass or treble energy like some cheaper Class D amps. It's very dynamic, which can be largely attributed to the immense power it provides to the speakers and the headroom it has in most cases. While the Class AB mode offers higher headroom, making it slightly more dynamic, I still prefer Class A in most situations. Regardless of the mode, it produces a very rich and full sound with a well-done midrange that brings out the vocals. 
The separation of instruments is exceptional, which means that they are easily distinguishable and do not blend at all. Regarding the soundstage, this amplifier slightly widens it, but sacrifices imaging a little bit. The center image is sometimes fuzzy. That's not a big issue in my opinion, but I know that some people prefer crystal clear imaging with a dead center. That's why I think it's worth bringing up the fact that this amplifier focuses on soundstage width more than its precision. In general, this amplifier provides a high-end audio experience with a refined sound that pairs well with a wide range of speakers. It's versatile and it can handle both low and high impedance loads, and also allows for switching between Class A and Class AB modes. The high power capability of this amplifier ensures consistent and powerful performance no matter what it is connected to.